How can we be up to nine Kunio games? Forget Mario, Kunio should have been the mascot of the Famicom. And for Niketsu Kokuto Densetsu, everyone's favorite 8-bit bad boy gets back to doing what he does best. Brawling. The plot of the game is that Kunio has received a challenge letter inviting him to take part in a fighting tournament to determine the strongest high school student in Japan. But you are not Kunio. Or at least not normally. There's a way you can play as Kunio, but it's complicated. Instead, Kunio drops the letter, and you pick it up. And you decide to join the fighting tournament as well. There's two different modes here, story mode and battle mode. But battle mode is just the same fights as story mode, only you can play up to four players. So we're just going to ignore that. In story mode, your first task is to create a character. You enter a name, a birth date, and choose a blood type. And all of this affects your stats, fighting style, and which characters you're compatible with. One aspect to this is that you always can get passwords for characters. This includes the pre-generated characters like Kunio and Riki. So you could, instead of creating your own character, enter one of those passwords and use them. Similarly, after you've created your character, you're offered the opportunity to enter a password for a partner. If you don't have a password you want to enter, then you get to choose between 16 different characters. They're organized according to fighting style. You have the brawlers like Kunio, who use some wrestling moves and are all-around average fighters. That was the style of the character I mainly played as while I was recording. Then you have the martial artists like Riki. They have stronger punching moves. The Kung Fu Masters have strong kicks. And finally, the Judo Masters have strong grapples and throws. Most people consider brawling to be the weakest option, and Kung Fu to be the strongest. Now that you have a partner, it's time to decide the rules of the tournament. There are five different rule sets, and how they work is that they create alternative victory conditions that I really didn't use while I was playing. The normal way that you win is to beat your opponents into unconsciousness. Make their health bar run out, and you win. That's the only way to win under rule set 5. For rule set 1, if you can score 10 hits with combo attacks, then you win. Combo attacks are a special set of moves that are triggered when both partners get close together and can get into kind of a spin. The effectiveness of this move and how long it takes to activate are determined by their compatibility level. Compatibility goes up as you work together, and it goes down when you hit each other. The AI player has a tendency to run straight at whoever you're fighting, and wind up getting hit by you, lowering the compatibility. As the compatibility goes down, it's more likely to run into a fight and hit you instead. Rule set 2 requires that you injure people with terrain 10 times. Most of the arenas have something that you should be avoiding. Pits with spikes are the most common, but there's also this stage that starts out with landmines scattered everywhere, and this level that has electric walls. You really have to be careful with those walls because anyone who touches them is flung backwards and will also electrocute people that they hit. For the purposes of rule set 2, throwing people into walls or ramming them into objects also counts as terrain damage. Rule set 3 requires that you perform special attacks on people 10 times. Which attack triggers it varies with each character, so it might be that you have to throw somebody or perform a particular wrestling move. Finally, rule set 4 requires that you just take no damage for a while. Avoid combat for long enough and you'll win. The control scheme in the arena brawls is similar to previous Kunio games. B attacks with your hands, A attacks with your feet, pressing both at the same time will make you jump, and double tapping in a direction will make you run. And of course there's lots of context dependent moves. If you're next to a downed opponent, then your kick button might make you stomp on them for a bit. Or if you're running and hit A, then you might slam into someone with your shoulder. When someone is defeated, they drop an item. The most common of these items are food, which, unless it's a poisonous mushroom, will restore your health. In battle mode, they might drop items that are permanent stat upgrades. After the match, you've gotten some experience and will level up, and that will of course improve all of your stats. The character you control is more likely to grow faster than your AI partner, too. Of course, over the course of the tournament, your opponents are also getting stronger. 
In between matches, you also can check your status and get the current password for your character. Once you've taken part in 15 matches, if you've lost three or fewer fights, then you have the opportunity to challenge the final boss. The reception of Naketsu Kakuto Densetsu in Japan is kind of odd. I think it could best be summed up with a comment that went something like, I know it wasn't a great game, but we couldn't stop playing it. The game proved to be rather popular, and ten years later, a fan made an upgraded version for computers called Naketsu Kakuto Densetsu. It's spelled very slightly differently in Japanese, though the title means the exact same thing. That fan remake wound up building quite a community for itself, as it took the concept and made it an 8-player brawler and tossed weapons into the ring. As for myself, well, I was having a good time. The game's barely holding together on the Famicom, and the partners don't really work right, and the combat tends to flail wildly, requiring that you do 15 matches when there's effectively only four other teams to compete against, winds up feeling a bit excessive. But the gameplay is really fast, and the action winds up being pretty exciting. I wish I had another player to join me in this one. At the very least, I could get rid of that awful AI behavior. Even with those reservations, though, this is still a pretty fun game. It's just maybe one that won't hold your attention very long.